Good evening, folks. I'm meteorologist Ross Moom. All the time is now 8 o'clock as we continue our coverage with tracking what is now Category 4 Hurricane Helene. Sustained winds of 130 miles per hour, now less than several hours before making landfall, likely within about the next two to three hours, and less than 100 miles away from that Florida coast in Florida's Big Bend and Appalachia Bay. So pressure continues to drop at 942 millibars right now. So a still a worrying sign that those winds still could potentially increase at least a little bit more right below uh, right before landfall, but continuing on its trek to the north northeast at 23 miles per hour. Again, landfall expected within the next several hours. So latest cone here once it does update for you and advances is pretty much on the exact same track. We're not expecting uh, any major changes uh, to the forecast specifically. So Jacksonville still expecting those 40 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. We're going to be about 150 miles to the east of the main track here. So Still continuing right to the east of Tallahassee, which is very, very good news for the state capital because it's going to be on that western side. Winds are going to be more so from the northwest and west, so likely not going to be nearly as strong. Those winds coming off of the land and the continent rather than coming off the ocean and coming in. So now folks for Perry and to the north of there, you are still going to see likely that eye wall in the worst of the storm, but for folks in Tallahassee, Florida State, even uh, looking a slightly better for you folks, although still very gusty and certainly a ton of rain, but it's expected to continue its strength overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning by Friday at 2 a.m. So overnight still forecasted to be a category two storm with sustained winds of 105 miles per hour as it makes its way pretty much parallel with I-75 straight up towards Valdosta and then eventually Macon and even in Atlanta then by really late tomorrow morning and into the early afternoon. So here's what we're looking at right now. Again, Helene headed right into Appalachia Bay. What we are concerned about here on the first coast is this kind of last uh, vestige of a swing on the tail end of Helene. So many of these bands have already come through this evening. We've seen some very quick but heavy downpours, and we've certainly had our fair share of tornado warnings as well. That will continue to be a threat as these bands for, that are currently down in Tampa uh, and northward of, from there eventually make their way into some of our southern counties. So Clay, Putnam, Union, Bradford, they're going to see them first before they eventually make their way a little bit closer to I-10 in Jacksonville. But from Lake City, the eye wall just over 100 miles away. And like I had mentioned earlier, less than 100 miles now, likely only about 70, maybe 75 miles away from making landfall there in Appalachia Bay. Now one more thing to keep in mind, the National Weather Service did just extend our tornado watch until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So everyone across the first coast from Jacksonville and Ponte Vedra Beach, the whole way out to Lake City, we are all included in that tornado watch until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. As these bands continue to move on shore, many of them will continue to still see that isolated tornado risk. You get these little mesovortices spinning up offshore as they move onshore. Um, that's where that risk will lie. So for the time being, uh, really the only concerning area might be up towards Glen and Camden counties in the Brunswick area. The storms further to the west and southwest of us not looking nearly as strong. So for the time being, at least not too concerned about a tornado risk here. We're more so concerned with these outer bands still streaming in across some more of our uh, southeast coastal areas in Georgia there. But here's just one more look at Hurricane Helene. This is infrared satellite imagery for you. Just the overall magnitude of this storm is just incredible. Massive sight here uh, just hours before it makes landfall there. That eye becoming very concentric and much more defined in the center. A lot of lightning around the core there as well as it continues to grow and expand as it heads toward Appalachia Bay. The winds have also been cranking up here or ramping up at least over the next several or have over the past several hours. I should say sustained winds now anywhere from about 20 to 35 miles per hour. When you think about the wind gust, then NAS Jacks 56 mile per hour wind gust. We had a report of a 59 mile per hour gust over at Mayport about uh, I'd say maybe 30 to 45 minutes ago or so. So 30 to 40, even upwards of 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts are now on the threshold. So the worst of the storm is pretty much going to be happening now through about 1 a.m. here this evening for much of Duval County and the first coast as uh, the models continue to update more and more as more data comes in from the hurricane hunters and the recon that is out there surveying Hurricane uh, Helene. 
So for most of the I-95 corridor, we're still only going to see those tropical storm force winds. That's the 40 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That's what we're already experiencing and we'll continue to see throughout the remainder of this evening. Now, the other worrying thing is that the orange, that's going to be where you could see category one uh, hurricane of force winds more than 60. You're talking closer to 70, 80, maybe even 90 miles per hour. That has shifted a little bit further eastward. So for any of our friends out there towards I-75, especially in Lake City, but even Western Baker County, Union Bradford County, and the Oki Finokis up towards Waycross even, you still could see certainly some of those wind gusts pushing closer to that 70 to 80 mile per hour uh, threshold. Now, Perry and then to the east and southeast of Tallahassee. That's really where the worst of those hurricane force winds will continue to be seen, not only over the next couple of hours, but overnight tonight as well. Just see how quickly the storm moves northward. It continues to keep its strength. So if it was a slow moving storm, uh, those winds would decrease uh, a little bit faster, whereas because the storm is moving just so quickly north, it's going to keep and sustain those hurricane force winds well inland across much of not only southern but central Georgia and potentially even up towards Atlanta by very early tomorrow morning. Some very heavily wooded and forested areas up there across central and northern Georgia. So uh, down trees, power lines and power outages certainly going to be a concern uh, not only here and across our western areas, but certainly up there towards Atlanta as well. Another issue is going to continue to be the storm surge from Fort Myers to Sarasota, even up to Tampa Bay. They saw the worst of their storm surge earlier today up until about 1 to 2 p.m., but now still 15 to 20 foot storm surge, especially in this most northern part of Appalachia Bay. Now, the good news is that's not that area is not overly populated or hugely populated, but nonetheless, that is going to be not only catastrophic, but potentially life threatening storm surge in that area. You put on top of that, then the rainfall that those folks have continued to see here over about the last day or so, and that's going to extend northward up into those same areas where the strongest winds will be seen here over the next 12 to 18 hours. So from Macon up to Atlanta and then right up into the Appalachians, that's going to be Asheville, Eastern Tennessee, the Knoxville area. Um, right over where Clemson is in Western South Carolina. Some very, very heavy rain as kind of the northern tail is kind of just flared northward. And that's really for two reasons. One, we have a cold front draped across uh, the, uh, the Tennessee River Valley down into central and northern Alabama. So that's kind of helping to steer Helene northward and also dragging a lot of the moisture up there. But think about all the southeasterly winds pushing on shore. Those winds uh, really being seen by orographic lift. So what that what does that mean really? Those winds are moving up the terrain, up the mountains, uh, and that's kind of acting as a wedge the mountains are. So all of that air lifts, drops all the rain right on the eastern side of many of those mountains. Flash flood uh, concerns and warnings will certainly be a big problem for those folks over the next day or so. But Let's just kind of break it down county by county, let you know what's in store here for the rest of this evening. The worst of it is from now up until about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. at the latest for Union, Bradford, Baker and Columbia counties. Wind gusts of 70 to 90 miles per hour will certainly be the biggest concern for many of these areas. Hurricane force winds are expected here, so hopefully you have taking your precautions and preparations and you've hunkered down and are ready to brace out the storm here throughout the remainder of this evening. Those hurricane force winds will certainly cause flying debris, whether that's moderate to even major roof damage, a lot of down limbs and trees, uh, and certainly a lot of down power lines as well. So we do expect uh, potentially widespread and extensive power outages across some of our western areas from Columbia County westward out towards uh, really the eastern edge of Tallahassee. So worst of the storm will be across the I-75 corridor. Now heading a little bit further northward for the Okefenokees, the Waycross and Folkestone areas. Worst of the storm is going to be a little bit later as Helene moves northward, primarily between about 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Wind gusts anywhere from about 60 to 75 miles per hour. I think the western sides of Ware County might see an isolated wind gust of about 80 potentially, uh, but still certainly uh, going to cause some at least minor to moderate damage. A lot of broken trees uh, and limbs and things of that such out across the Okefenokees and across southeast Georgia. Isolated tornado risk also going to be lingering around for all of our counties here, whether that's going to be across coastal southeast Georgia, probably the best place to see some of those isolated tornadoes or just here in Duval County or any of our southern counties. 
Clay, St. John's, Putnam, Flagler, wind gusts have already been seen and reported upwards of 55 to nearly 60 miles per hour. Some coastal areas right along the beach could potentially see upwards of about 65 because those winds are coming right off the ocean. But many of us inland upwards of about 50 to 60 miles per hour. So we're in the heat of the storm now. This is going to continue up until about 1 a.m. here this evening. This is one last look at what uh, Helene looks like again pouring all this moisture up across much of the eastern seaboard. We are now just hours away, hours away from landfall. Hurricane Helene, a category four storm now less than 75 miles away from making landfall in Florida's Big Bend. We will have much more for you coming up, but for the time being, I'm meteorologist Ross Mumal. First Coast News on your side. This has been a First Coast News on your side special report tracking Helene.